Morning, Fran. Good morning, sir. Sleep well, sir? Quite. You? Oh, uh, I'll want my hunting suit later on this morning. And your gun, sir? Obviously. Thank you, Fran. Morning. Have you had any more trouble with that new washing machine? No, sir. Not since we've learned how to work it. Mm. Plumbing in Her Excellency's bathroom is still very noisy. Sir, sir. We'll attend to it. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. There was a butterfly in His Excellency's dictionary yesterday. Indeed, sir. Among the elves. Sorry, sir. You use your spray gun. The tie. Yes, sir. Where is your cap? It uh, wasn't becoming. We'll overlook that. You will wear it at all times. Yes, sir. We'll need about three dozen additional roses this morning for the Baroness's suite. Yes, sir. How are the water lilies? They're blooming nicely, sir. Is there a Burmese hymnostra in bloom? Oh, a beauty, sir. Fetch it for me. You may go now. Yes, sir. This is the last day of the parliamentary election. For those of you who have not voted, will be given time to do so today. That will be all. No, 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 Clary. The fruit salts always go to the right of His Excellency's cup, never to the left. Would the world cave in if the fruit salts were on the left? No, but His Excellency has habits that he clings to. He demands exactness. It's merely a matter of getting used to our ways. I'm sorry, sir. I'm so anxious to do things as you want them done. Uh, yes, uh, the hot water. Oh. Above all, never forget the hot water. His Excellency likes his coffee weak. He wore the old stuffed shirt. Clary, the Prime Minister of Hungary is not a stuffed shirt. In the future, you will please pay him the respect that is due him. Fiddlesticks. He's only a man, after all, just like you. Don't you ever get off your high horse and have fun? Clary, uh, don't let your imagination run away with you. All right, take it along, quickly. All set? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Oh. Lovely, isn't it? It is indeed, sir. Yes. Ready. Good morning, Otto. Would you like to see your master? Well, I think that can be arranged. Hey, hey. Hmm. 
Hello, Otto. How are you this morning, old boy? Eh? Good morning, Excellency. Good morning, Your Hand. Very good, very good boy. Good, very good boy. Oh, Your Hand, will you kindly break my neck? With pleasure, Excellency. That's better. Thank you. My congratulations, Excellency. For what? Your triumph at Pole. Oh, that. You'd think at my age I'd have sense enough to get out of politics instead of wasting all my time with a lot of nincompoops and parasites. You know, Johan, I envy you. You lead a sane, simple, normal life. Politics mean nothing to you. And yet you're completely happy, aren't you? Now, how could it be otherwise, Excellency? You've always been very kind. Well, why shouldn't I be kind? You provide the only real comfort I have these days. More than that, you keep my faith in human beings alive. All around me, I see nothing but fine old families degenerating. Sons inheriting only the worst of their fathers. But you poor rocks go on forever, unchanged. I remember when your grandfather was butler here. Fine character. So was your father. And you, your hands, still have all the ancient virtues. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you, Johan. Yes, come in. Good morning, Baroness. Good morning to you, Johan. I suppose I'm being served last, as usual. You're still the youngest, Baroness. Yes, but now I am a guest. If the Baroness wishes, I'll take the matter up with the Countess. <laughs> I was only joking, Johan. Of course. Oh, how nice of you to remember. Thank you, Excellency. Mm -hmm. I hope you rested well. Oh, yes. I always rest well here in the country. I feel I am a thousand miles from Budapest. Not just 40. And the voting in the village, how is it going? His Excellency is far in the lead. Oh, of course. But are the peasants really enthusiastic about my father? Naturally, all the peasants of the district work on his estates. Yes. And how are you getting along, Johan? I? I mean, haven't you married or anything? Oh, no, Excellency, neither married nor anything. But you must marry, Johan, so that when you are old, your son can take your place in my father's house. You represent a dynasty here. The dynastic phase of it uh, never occurred to me, Excellency. But it's your duty, Johan. There are lots of strong, healthy girls who come to the castle from the countryside. Get yourself a good, capable wife. Two working together get so much further. In general, Baroness, uh, we don't get very far. Oh, but, oh, how clumsy. <laughs> Johan, please. Oh, well, oh, good morning, Mother. Come in. Good morning, my dear. Thank you, Johan. Yes, Excellency. What was Johan doing? I dropped some marmalade. Oh. How are you, my darling? Oh, fine. I thought I'd have my second cup of coffee with you. Good. You look lovely, Katrina. So rested. Oh, I am. Everything was here as if I had been sleeping in the castle every night. My hard pillow, the glass of mineral water, the bed warmer, everything. Yes, Johan never forgets anything. George telephone. He'll be here for tea. It's perhaps a little late. He's always late now that he's in Parliament. You ought to be very grateful that he's taken up politics. He won't have as much time now for his actresses and racehorses. Why talk about that? It's such a lovely morning. I don't see why you ever married him in the first place. Goodness knows, Papa and I did everything but horse with you to stop it. Maybe it's why I did it. If you two had not made such a fuss, I probably would have seen George for what he is. <laughs> I guess that's as good a reason as any. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
Your Excellency. Hmm? I think the beaters have stirred up a cubby, sir. Oh? Where? Just beyond that nearest clump. If you wait here, sir, I'll get them started. Cubby over there, sir. Stir them up. Yes, sir. Someday the old man is going to hit one. Not as long as he aims at them. Three more, Johan. Not bad. Not bad. Your Excellency is in perfect form today. Uh, odd, but have you noticed an echo here lately? I don't remember it as a boy. Well, uh, uh, echoes are variable, sir. Uh, like the weather. Oh. Yo-ho! Apparently the wind has shifted. Oh, Teresa. Yes, sir. Telephone Madame Feuillot in Budapest. Tell her I won't be there for my fitting. I'll let her know when. Yes, sir. mother would give you to me to take back to Budapest. I've had already so many butter. I'm always looking for one like you. But there's this Antony. Perhaps that's because I'm what you might call a full-blooded butler. The family tree of butlers behind me. <laughs> what is that? Oh, they're setting up a microphone on the terrace. As soon as the final results of the election are announced, your father is going to make a radio talk. Oh. May I remind the Baroness that it is almost time for tea? Thank you, Johan. Don't you think you could learn to like me, Johan? Nothing could be easier, Clary. Well, then what's stopping you? The usual reason. Another woman? Three of them, all very jealous. And very dangerous. Yes, I enjoyed it immensely. And think of it, Katrina, 14 today. Quail? Yes, a quail. <laughs> and such plump ones make me feel simply terrible to have to share them with the servants. <laughs> Johan here always brings me luck. Whenever he's with me, I get a good bag. When I'm alone, I don't do so well. We'll have tea now. We'll wait for the Baron. Good afternoon, Baron. Good afternoon, Teresa. George, it's nice to see you. Good afternoon, George. Afternoon, Mama. Afternoon, Papa. How are you, my sweet? Very well. How is it in Budapest, Quo? Oh, I've been much too busy to notice, darling. How's the election going? Excellent, Papa. Excellent. You know, we've won the provinces. But uh, there seems to have been a slight upset in Budapest. According to the latest returns, the social progressives of all people have won six seats. Six? Are you sure it was six, sir? Well, if you please, Johann. Offer the Baron some sugar. Yes, Excellency. <laughs> so, uh, you are the perfect butler my wife's always talking about, huh? I beg your pardon, sir. I forgot myself. Oh, don't bother about it, Johan. It's all right. May we have some sandwiches? Oh, yes, Excellency. I don't understand it. Never in his life has he committed such a faux pas. Perhaps he's interested, my dear, like the rest of the country. Of course. Besides, everybody makes mistakes once in a while. After all, he's not a machine. He's only human. Of course, of course. Oh, Johan, turn on the radio. Yes, sir. You the right time, George. Mm -hmm. 
Five past four. Mm -hmm. I thought I was slow. They should be announcing the election results from Budapest. Yeah, that's right. Have been elected. In the district of South Budapest, the social progressives received 44,125 votes, electing six of their deputies. The first deputy is Shandor Inchi. The second... Why did you do that? I beg your pardon, Excellency. But I must tell you something very important. It can hardly be so important that it can't wait till evening. Yes. In any case, let's have the radio again. As you wish, sir. The fifth deputy is Carl Peters. The sixth is Johann Porak. Porak's election is especially remarkable in that he is butler in the home of the leader of the opposing conservative party, Count Albert Sandor. That is all for the present. Well, Johann elected to Parliament? <laughs> it's unheard of. Is this true, Johann? Excellency, that was the important news that I wanted to tell you. Oh. <laughs> oh I can't believe it. But he can't go to Parliament. I never heard of such a thing. Now, what are we going to do without him? Johann. Yes, Excellency. Why didn't you tell us about this? Well, I'm greatly surprised myself, Excellency. My party named me in sixth place, and we only counted on electing three deputies. But if you belong to the opposing party, how can you be loyal to us? Excellency, I perform my duties faithfully here. My loyalty to you has never wavered. <laughs> well, Mama? In our house, we have no such loyal servants, but at least only gentlemen join in our discussions. Johan, you've no idea what a spot you've gotten yourself into. In Parliament, there are educated people. How can you stand up to them? Excellency, as Baron Marisi has already suggested, I am not a gentleman. Therefore, I've had time to educate myself. What do you mean by that? Only that not being a gentleman, I don't have to play bridge, I don't have to dance, I don't have to attend the races. So I have time to... To betray those who have been good to you and have given you your bride? If acquiring an education is betrayal, then the Baroness is undoubtedly right. Doesn't education teach loyalty? It does indeed, Baroness. And I've not been disloyal to His Excellency in any way. You believe me, don't you, sir? Of course, Johann, I believe you. But you're certainly doing me a rotten trick. You see? You see? What should I do without you? You know all my habits, all my weaknesses. You even bring me luck when I go hunting. Good or bad, I manage somehow to govern the country, but I can't lace my shoes or knot my tie. How can I hope to teach a new butler all these things that you have in your very blood? But, Excellency, that won't be necessary in the least. Why not? You're not in my service anymore, are you? Sir, when my party nominated me for Parliament, I was a butler. Just as you have remained a landowner, so I am remaining what I am. As long as there is no interference with my political activities, I should consider myself very fortunate to remain in Your Excellency's service. Why? So you can spy on my father and report to your party? Come, Katrina, you know Johann better than that. Then everything's settled, Johann. As far as I'm concerned, you may talk politics as much as you like. In fact, I think I'm going to like the situation. You never before could accompany me into Parliament. Now you can. Instead of having some awkward cabinet minister doing things for me, I shall have my own capable butler. Thank you, sir. So everything remains as it is. Might be good enough to get me a glass of cognac in honor of the great scare. Yes, sir. I only hope you can trust him, Father. Have no fear, Katrina. I beg your pardon, Excellency. The radio people say everything is ready. Huh, I'll be right out. Coming, my dear? Yes, of course I am. I love to hear you speak. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Your Excellency. Good afternoon, my friend. They'll flash us in just a few moments, sir. Oh, uh, Papa, where's the manuscript of your speech? Oh, Albert never prepares anything. He always speaks without thinking. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Leave it at that. That's the first critical judgment I've had from you in 30 years. <laughs> oh, Albert. <laughs> <laughs> now, you sit over here, my dear, and you'll be quiet, won't you? Oh, yes, of course. I understand, yes. 20 seconds, sir. I'm ready. Hello, Radio Budapest speaking. 
This broadcast comes to you from the castle of the Prime Minister at Shandor. We are standing here on the beautiful terrace of this venerable manor house, and His Excellency the Prime Minister, Albert Shandor, is about to address you. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I wish to thank you sincerely for the trust you have shown in me and my party. I shall not exhaust your patience by telling you of our complete program. In any case, that would be unnecessary. Our program can be condensed into a single word, and that word is bread. Bread for everyone in the country. The party promises bread to all. Shh. We humbly thank Your Excellency for your significant address. And now, may I ask Your Excellency, on behalf of our radio audience, if it is true that your butler has been elected to Parliament by the opposition? Yes, it's quite true. I assume, Your Excellency, that uh, the newly elected member of Parliament is no longer at the castle. Why not? Come here a moment, Johann. Johann's going to speak? Shh! Why not have the newly elected deputy give his opinion of the political situation? No, Father. Well, as you wish, Excellency. It would surely be very, very interesting. Would you kindly speak into the microphone, honorable sir? I'll introduce you. Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to hear from the newly elected deputy of the Social Progressive Party, Mr. Johann Porak. Fellow countrymen, to my regret, I can view the present situation in no such favorable light as the Prime Minister. Unfortunately, the Unfortunately, the control of the government is once again in the hands of a party whose record has been marked by cowardice, deception, and weak-kneed compromise. What? Do you hear what he's saying? Shh! Shh, sir. Under the rule of the conservatives, the condition of the working class has grown more and more desperate. That, however, means little to a party that for years has fattened on the ever-increasing taxes wrung from the hands of a half-starved population. The Social Progressive Party, and I as a member of that party, will make every effort to put an end to this deplorable state of affairs, for which no one is more responsible than the Prime Minister, Count Albert Shandor. Father, why don't you stop him? Year after year, Count Shandor has been promising the people a chicken in every pot. There have been no chickens. Even the very pots are gone, taxed away. Now, he merely promises bread. Another empty promise. My countrymen, the Social Progressive Party does not promise the working people bread. We will give you bread. I thank you. I thank the Honorable Member of Parliament, and this concludes the broadcast from the castle of the Prime Minister. Baroness? You should be ashamed of yourself. Huh, I should think so. Cognac, Excellency. Ah. Splendid talk, Johann. Splendid. Oh, thank you, Excellency. Thank you very... Shall I uh, lay out a soft shirt or a stiff one for the meeting this evening? <laughs> Congratulations, Katrina. This is the biggest party we've ever had for the children's fun. Isn't it wonderful? All these people turning out for charity. But did they turn out for charity? Of course. Why else? My dears, isn't she sweet? Come now, Katrina, you can't pretend with me. You know very well Johann Porak is the talk of all Budapest. Don't be ridiculous. My father's birthday? Katrina, darling, do come and have your tea with us. We've saved a place for you. Thank you. Did you undry the dancer? Oh, yes, yes. I thought they were perfectly beautiful. So did I. Ah, good. Will you have more tea? Not just now, thank you. 
Oh, I think I'll have a little more. Oh, good. Oh, Katrina, that music is so lovely. Yes, isn't it? May I? Oh, well, dear, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sugar? I beg your pardon. Sugar? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. How many? Oh, well, just go right ahead. I'll tell you when to stop. You know, I never have to diet. <laughs> Lovely music and lovely. I think perhaps you had better get some more sugar. Yes, very much. Did you ever see such poise? And that voice, so rich and vibrant. Didn't it just thrill you to death yesterday in Parliament? I wasn't there. Why, it was the most exciting speech I've ever heard. <laughs> it even kept my husband awake. <laughs> Why, there's never been anyone in Parliament like him. <laughs> I just happened to drop in to keep out of the rain. And I've been practically haunting the place ever since. I beg your pardon. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Mr. Porras, I must tell you what a wonderful speech you made yesterday. Of course, I didn't understand a word of it, but I just loved it. Thank you, Countess. You know, you make me feel so patriotic. Tell me, do you think you could find time to come to my house some afternoon and just uh, clarify? Uh, perhaps I could, Countess, on one of my afternoons off. Your hand, please. My hot water. Yes, ma'am. Katrina, you owe it to yourself to hear that man address Parliament. Why don't you come with us tomorrow? I'm not interested. Why, how can you say that when he's practically a member of your family? He's not, and I will not go. Here you are, Baroness. Oh, thank you so much for helping us out. It was a great pleasure. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Sixty more, Baroness, for the auction. That makes four seventy. Just twice as much as the last time. My friends are very generous. Yes, they seem very eager to come. Of course, with the greatest attraction in Budapest here. Are you hurt, Baroness? Oh, it's nothing. Just twisted my knee. Good morning. Oh, oh the Baroness was not going to wait. No, just give me a moment. It'll be all right. Oh. A twisted knee can be very dangerous, Baroness. Your hand, please. Put me down. But this is ridiculous. You are putting me like a child. If the Baroness will kindly put her arm around my neck, I think she'll be more comfortable. Beg pardon, Baroness. What is it? The Countess Algus on the telephone. But well, the Baroness can't go to the telephone now. Well, take her message. Now, if the Baroness will roll down her stocking, I'll get a hot pack. I want a cold pack. I beg your pardon, Baroness, a hot pack. I think I should know what's best. I want a cold pack. Yes, Baroness, cold pack. Oh, what did she say? Countess Argo wants to know if you won't change your mind and go with them to Parliament tomorrow. Tell her no. May I be of some assistance? No, thank you. It's all right. Tell him I'm never going to Parliament. I'll be found dead in that awful place. Ah! Oh! Oh, but it's hot! Yes, sir. <sighs> hey, everybody declare this session of the House open. These things can't be done in a day. We have done the best we could under the present circumstances. And in due time, everything will be rectified. <laughs> Mr. President. The chair recognizes the honorable representative, Mr. Porock. We ask for action, and what do we get? A lot of words. We ask for decisions, and we get more words. Can our people live on words alone? The honorable gentlemen of the opposition speak eloquently and at great length of providing relief for the people. Isn't he thrilling? May I suggest that if this government's present policy continues much longer, the people will have nothing left to be relieved of. <laughs> Thank you. 
Isn't he good looking? I must tell that to Freddy. dragging me off to Parliament of all places. We might have been spending this time Christmas shopping. Mother, you've got to have your eyes open. You've been out at the castle not even reading the paper. You haven't any idea what your precious Johan has been doing. Oh, why should I worry about Johan? Papa isn't disturbed by it. Hmm. Johan's making him the laughing stock of the country, and he does nothing about it. Father has a very good heart. Too good. You'll see, Mother. His own butler will be his downfall. He has only been in Parliament three months, and already the government quinks every time he stamps his feet. <laughs> the idea, Johan stamping his feet. Papa would never have allowed it. <laughs> no. Same bill they presented a week ago. They make those promises, but nothing ever comes of them. Just let them try to put it up again. File with the cats in case. But why aren't they making speeches? They are not in session yet. Well, I thought speeches were going on all the time. Really, Mother? Do you mean you've never been here before? Never. I'm not interested in politics. I can't make heads or tails of them. I'm surprised that you can. Don't give a hoot about politics. I hate everything about them. But somebody has to put it father. I'll show him Who, that... Who, your father? No, your father. Well, why should he upset you so if Papa doesn't mind? Do you know the other day? I saw him at the opera. He sat in the tenth row. No, no, it was the ninth, in the center. What opera? Oh, I don't remember the opera, but he wore a dark blue single breasted suit with a carnation in his lapel. He looked so superior. I felt like slapping him in the face. And that isn't the first time I felt that way either. Last week, he stood on the floor down there and called Father a political ventriloquist. Papa, a ventriloquist? Oh, I was so mad, I almost threw a bit at him. There he is now. <laughs> Another new suit. He's a perfect butler. He fixes Papa's tie. In a few moments, he will be cutting his throat. That'll be all, sir. Yeah, that'll be all, Your Hand. And now that you've put me together, you can go over there and tear me apart. I hope you'll understand, Excellency. There's nothing personal in my attacks. I understand perfectly. Go to it. Make a good job of it. My wife and daughter are here today. Ah, there they are. I'll do my best. Morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Johan, how long are you going to continue working for the Prime Minister? Indefinitely. But it cheapens us to have the leader of our party. It cheapens us. Since when has work ever cheapened anybody? After all, there is such a thing as dignity. Why should you wait hand and foot on a man who, who enslaves our people? The Count doesn't enslave anybody. He's a good employer. He's our enemy. Does one tie the necktie of an enemy? You ought to tie a rope around his neck, not a necktie. I agree with you. Now listen, once and for all. My work for you and my work for the Count are two distinct things. I've been faithful to our party. I haven't failed you in any respect. And I don't intend to leave the Count's service until he discharges me. I hereby declare the session of the House open. The clerk will proceed with the reading of the government bill number 482. Mr. Clerk. Bill number 482 is read in the third session. A bill to be enacted by the joint houses of Parliament. Well, what's he saying? I don't understand a word of it. Oh, don't worry. Nobody else does. He isn't saying anything about Papa being a ventriloquist, is he? improvement is recommended by the government engineer. The Minister of Agriculture is to be advised to carry into effect... Ah, Countess Fairness. I thought I might find you here. Major Anders. Uh, may I join you for a minute? Oh, please do. Oh, thanks so much. It's very nice of you. I never see you anymore. Sometimes I feel that you're trying to avoid me. Oh, she's been giving all her time to politics. What a horrible thing for a beautiful woman to give her time to. Can't we slip away somewhere and have some coffee? Oh. Well, surely you aren't interested in that mumble-jumble going on down there? Oh, 
Oh, but I am. You see? He's reading about cats and crates. Cats and crates? What do you care about cats and crates? I'm very fond of crates. They have been a passion of mine, even as a child. I'll, I'll buy you crates. A dozen crates. Oh. Listen, Tina. I don't sleep anymore. I don't eat. I, I shrink in my uniforms. If you only knew what went on in, in here. I, I kneel at your feet. Oh, please, not here. Remember, I'm a married woman. But, Katrina, can I strangle my heart by telling you that you're married? But the fact remains, I have a husband, you see. George, that popinjay, fine husband he is, strutting and philandering, imagining himself a sort of irresistible Casanova. Quiet! Then I can't tear you away from this depressing rigmarole? I'm afraid not. Then I have an appointment. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh. Goodbye, Major. In reply to the question about the agricultural bill, I have this to say. The Conservative Party in the recent campaign promised to have the measure passed at this session. The promise will be kept. Here, here. Of course, there are difficulties. <laughs> but they will be surmounted. That is all I have to say at this time. <laughs> Mr. President. The Chair recognizes the Honorable Representative, Mr. Porak. His Excellency, the Prime Minister, always has promises for us. And undoubtedly, he would carry out those promises, were it not for the difficulties that are always arising. Never was there a man so beset by difficulties. In fact, I am prompted to suggest a higher rank for the Prime Minister. Why not call him the Duke of Difficulties? <laughs> <laughs> Sir, about Papa being made a Duke? I hadn't heard about that. Five years ago, the Duke, I beg your pardon, the Prime Minister, promised us an old age pension law. But we got no old age pension law. Why not? Difficulty. Four years ago, he promised to revise farm taxes downward. But the taxes were not revised downward. Why not? Difficulty. Three years ago, he promised us a reduction in armaments. But we got no reduction in armaments. Why not? Difficulty. Two years ago, he promised the people a chicken in every pot. But we got no chickens. Why not? Difficulty. Last year, he promised us a distribution of crown lands. But we got no distribution of crown lands. Why not? <laughs> and now, this year, our political ventriloquist, the mouthpiece of the landowners, comes before us with another glittering array of promises. And, as usual, he says there will be difficulties. He is right. He... Uh... Yes, go on. He will have difficulties. In fact, he is already having them. The Count is losing his support. He doesn't seem to realize it, but they are gradually slipping away from him. In fact, they have already slipped. The Count had better look to his supporters. But enough of that. The people of this country will not long continue to support a party that is still in the horse and buggy era. A party that is led by a man who allows himself to be used as a cloak for unjust, destructive, reactionary policies. Yeah. Yeah. The people of this country will no longer tolerate the policies of the Duke of Difficulties. Yeah. The time has come. Hey, who threw that? He did! The one pretending to be asleep! Oh, yeah. he did, did he? Uh, oh, trouble, huh? Well, there it is! Oh, hold on, hold on! Gentlemen, please! Gentlemen, I can see you! anything like that? I believe this is yours, Baroness. Thank you. Why, Katrina, what is he doing with your purse? It must have slipped from the Baroness's hand, Excellency. 
But my dear Katrina, that's no reason for discharging him. He was merely doing his duty. I thought it the most courageous, talented speech. In many ways, I agreed with him. I give up. Everything he does is right. Well, I'm not so sure about that. My garters. And the other day, I had to wait ten minutes in front of Parliament for him. He was having some sort of a conference. First time in my life I ever had to wait for a servant. But Albert, if he had a conference? Oh, Mother, are you defending him? Of course he shouldn't have kept you waiting ten minutes. He might have finished his business in five, you know? Well, uh, he hasn't any conference now, and where is our tea? Johan, where have you been all this time? Pardon me, Excellency, I had to change my clothes. Yes, you've taken time to change your clothes, but apparently you've forgotten all about me. Well, what is it you wish, sir? My bath and my walking clothes. Yes, Excellency. Where are you going? Serve the tea first. Why, Katrina, aren't you having tea? No, thank you. Why not? You wanted a minute ago. I changed my mind. Where's, uh, where's the saccharin? I'm sorry, sir. I didn't set the table. Well, ah, that's just the trouble. As long as you did, everything was just where it should be. I'll get it for you, sir. Yes, please. Good afternoon, Mama. Hello, my sweet. Good afternoon, Papa. Well, George, we didn't expect you. Yes, I know. I didn't know myself I was coming. Have some tea? No, thanks. I... Could we talk privately? It's very important. Certainly. Johan, we'll ring for you later. What's happened? I have some rather unpleasant news for you. Hmm? Only just after you left Parliament, without any warning, a vote of confidence was taken and you lost. Oh, they voted against me, eh? Why, Papa, you mean you have to resign again? Father isn't Prime Minister anymore? Apparently not, my dear. Just an ordinary member of Parliament. I don't wonder, after the things your butler said about you. Oh, Papa doesn't mind. He's resigned before. You let Johan go before bringing those little cakes. Oh, I'll get them, Mother. You know, I, I can't understand it. You were defeated by 14 votes. 14 votes, eh? With our majority? Very strange. Well, uh, Papa, you may not know it, but for quite some time there's been a plan underway for a coalition cabinet. Naturally, under the circumstances, nobody wanted to stick his neck out. Why didn't you stick your neck out, George? Well, uh, kind of slow-witted and really not very good at improvising. <laughs> you understand, don't you? Yes, I understand, George. You could have done something. You could have thought up some sort of nonsense to stop a vote. Oh, maybe you didn't want to stop it. No, 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 my dear, this really is something you don't understand. Yes, my dear, this is statesmanship. Statesmanship. To let a prime minister be defeated by a butler. <laughs> Marvelous. It must be very painful to you, George, to be the bearer of such distressing news. Well, uh, wasn't I right, Papa? Shouldn't you I? You did quite right. Now, at least I can take it easy. It's very nice, Albert, isn't it? Now we can spend more time together. Come yeah. along and get dressed, my dear. We'll take a long walk, and this evening we'll open a bottle of champagne. Uh, see how sweet your mother is. Every time the cabinet falls, she opens a bottle of champagne. In the old days, we used to drink it all up. Now we only open it. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Come along, Mama. Anyway, Albert, you won't have to be a ventriloquist anymore. <laughs> no. Now, tell me just what did happen. Well, it was just as I said. In other words, Johann Porrock gets up, goes poof, and the whole government falls to pieces. No, 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 my dear, you mustn't exaggerate. After all, you know, it wasn't only that. Things have been hanging fire for a long time. <laughs> Those few empty phrases Porrock threw into the air while they didn't mean a thing. That's not true. He did not speak empty phrases. In his speech, every sentence had an edge. Every word hit the point. Uh, uh, wait a minute, what are you going to do? If no one else in this house will tell him what they think of him, at least I will. Oh, now, my dear, forget it. You see, in statesmanship, one never considers what has happened. One looks only to the future. Uh, <clears throat> if you'll excuse me now, I really must do some telephoning, and my colleagues are very mm. anxious to hear from me, and naturally the press. Naturally the press. Yes. Did you ring, Baroness? Yes, you... I think you are the boldest adventurer that ever lived. You are a traitor. You bite the hand that feeds you. Oh. What else can I say to insult you? What you wish, Baroness. 
Here I must listen to everything. Here I am a servant. Yes, a servant who destroys my father. I beg pardon? As if you didn't know that as soon as we left Parliament today, a vote was taken, and my father was defeated, put out of office. Thank you, Baroness, for the news. That doesn't disturb you a bit, does it? You go right on working. Nothing disturbs you. I could tell you you were named Prime Minister or Emperor of China, and you wouldn't bat an eyelash. And that dry wouldn't even quiver in your hands, would it? Uh, probably not, Baroness. Oh, no. You are a disguised gentleman who sets everyone an example in self-control. Well, not at all. But if I allowed the trade to quiver, the dishes might fall and break, and the cost would be deducted from my wages. Hmm. How clever you are in finding answers to everything. If the Baroness would allow it, I should much prefer to keep quiet. Oh, you've been quiet long enough. Now, we are going to talk. I'm at your service, Baroness. For years, you've lived in this house. You've served us beautifully. You've bowed politely. But never, not once, by the slightest sign have you revealed your thoughts. What you were working for, planning. A bananas, uh, the housekeeper wants to buy a little cottage. The chambermaid has been saving for five years to get a taxi cab for her sweetheart. The gardener sent his son to medical school. The machinist... What's that got to do with you? Only this. All the servants in this house have dreams and hopes of their own. I have never noticed that the Baroness was particularly curious about any of them. So why should I assume that she would wish to make an exception of my humble self? No matter what you say, you can't change the fact that you have attacked the man who gave you your bread. That is true, but I have attacked him in the name of those who have no bread. But what about all these years you've worked for my father? Has this house meant nothing to you but salary and lodging? That is a great injustice, Baroness. For me, this house has meant his excellency. And even if coming from a butler it is no honor at all, I love him dearly. But politically, I consider his policies harmful and his position as head of the government enormously dangerous. Oh, may I ask why? Because with his respected name, his kindness, his personal unselfishness, he cloaks a policy that is evil and unjust. That is why I have fought against him with all my strength. An ordinary politician will fall sooner or later through his own failings. But His Excellency is as strong as granite. So you have to blow him up with dynamite. Is that it? Perhaps that's it, Baroness. Johan! Johan! Where have you been? Your Excellency, you changed your clothes alone? I waited for you 15 minutes, shivering in the Turkish towel, and you didn't come. You've forgotten your vest, Excellency. I couldn't find it. You should have worn a grey tie, sir. I couldn't find that either. I couldn't find anything. Will you tell me why you didn't come? It's my fault, Father. We were having a slight argument. An argument while I shiver? Sorry, Father. Well, goodbye, dear. I have to get back to town. Why? You don't have to go yet. I have my house to attend to. My servants aren't as competent as yours. Goodbye, Father. Is there anything else you wish, Excellency? Johan, I want to talk to you. I'm sorry, but this kind of thing can't go on. I'm forced to give you notice. I'm not surprised, Excellency. Since your election, you've become a very good member of Parliament, but a very bad servant. I can't depend on you any longer. There's no saccharine beside my cup. My garters have been slipping because the clasps are loose. My clothes are rumpled. My beer is warm, and my bath is cold. Johan, you're neglecting me. Unfortunately, that's true. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not doing it because you attack me in Parliament. I respect the convictions of my opponents. But no one can expect me to, to drink warm beer or go around tripping over my garters. The steward will give you your two weeks' pay. Very well, Excellency. Goodbye, my boy. I thank you for having served me faithfully for 12 years. I hope we shall often see each other in Parliament. I hope so too, sir. And may I thank Your Excellency most deeply for all your kindness to me. Now run along. Yes, sir.
Baron and Baroness Silagi, Mr. and Mrs. Herman Baumgarten, Count and Countess Kado Shah, Mr. Emil Schmultz. Oh, do you wish to invite the Dowager Duchess Zilka? Why not? The Dowager Duchess Zilka, Mr. and Mrs. Adolf Eisenhut. Why, Mother! Good morning, darling. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Of course not. What are you doing, Howard? Oh, I just rode in with Papa for the air. Good morning. Oh, my head. Could I have an aspirin? Mata, would you mind? Certainly, Baroness. Oh, dear. What are you up to, Katrina? Oh, I'm being the good wife. Helping my husband realize his political ambitions. I'm giving you a ball. A ball? Oh, you poor child. Do we have to come? Everybody has to come. That's George's idea. The blue blood is going to mingle with the red. What do you mean by that? Oh, thank you. I'm afraid I'll have to borrow your servants to help out. You can have more but one. That's what's the matter with my head. I wouldn't want him anyway. Couldn't have him if you did. Papa fired him. What? Yes, he left this morning. I've had a splitting headache ever since, or I'd have called you. I knew how pleased you'd be. It's about time. And good riddance, too. But who is going to look after him? He's only used to looking after other people. Well, we know how to manage somehow. It serves him right. Oh, would you mind, Mother, if we go on with the leaf? We're almost finished. Not at all, dear. I'll sit here and enjoy my aspirin. All right, Mother. Count and Countess Dobotsky. <laughs> I must get you alone. That's very flattering, Major, but can I trust you? Never. <laughs> Beg pardon, Baroness. Yes? The Baron would like to see you at once in the small sitting room. He says it's very important. Very well. I'm sorry, Major. My husband. Please, will you tell me why a husband should have all the privileges and, a, and an old friend none? I've been wondering about that myself lately, Major. Huh? You want to see me, George? Hmm? What is it? How beautiful you are tonight, my darling. Yes, yes, I know. What is it you want that's so important? Well, it's not really so important. I just wanted to tell you that at the last moment I invited a young member of Parliament. Who was just for refreshment, you know, uh, for coffee. Very well. Since you have become a public figure, I have entertained all kinds of people. One more or less can't matter. Well, don't you want to know who the guest is? Not particularly. It's Johan. It's Johann Porrock. I'm going to tell the servants not to admit him. Now, look, no. you've always understood me. You've always helped me. Well, not this time. This time, I won't. Won't you try to understand, darling? Porrock is the man of the hour. All the important people are flocking around him. Everyone has to give in a little. Every word you say makes it worse. No, really, darling, you are too squeamish. You know, there's a chance that I might be made a cabinet member. Now, isn't that worth a little sacrifice? Do you realize you are asking me to have at my table a man who a few days ago was my father's butler? Well, he isn't the butler now. He's a power. Besides, I have very definite reasons for inviting him. You know, there are certain circles that still won't have anything to do with him because he was a butler. But when you receive him, why, even those circles will simply have to shut their eyes to his past. I will not receive him. Baroness? Baroness? Good evening, my dear Johan. I'm so glad you got here. Come right in. Come right in. Isn't this nice, my dear Katrina, to have Mr. Porrock with us? Yes, very nice. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but I really have to leave you for just a few moments. The Baroness will look after you. My sweet, show Johan around, introduce him to our friend. I'll join you as soon as I can. <laughs> Well, 
Shall we go? I'll show you around. Oh, thank you, Baroness, but I have no desire to be shown around. No? Then why did you come here? The Baron invited me to a political conference. He mentioned five or six of my colleagues who would be here. I'm really here at the order of my party. In full dress? Well, I've been at a Toscanini concert. Oh, I see. You never think so highly of yourself. You go to concerts in full dress? No, Baroness. It's Toscanini I think highly of. Did you ever stop to think what I might say to your presence here? I had no idea I should meet the Baroness. Please don't let me keep you from your guests. I'll wait for the Baron here. As you wish. I see that you have something to drink. What would you like? Baroness is too kind. The last time I was here, on an errand for His Excellency, you offered me wine. Do you still have the same kind? Yes, but that wine is only for the servants, not for guests. Oh, I'm a guest. A thousand pardons, Baroness. I really hadn't noticed it. Have a seat, won't you? Thank you. Shall we talk? I believe it's the custom to chat with one's guest. I'm deeply moved, Baroness. Why? It's the first time that a member of my family has ever sat in the presence of a member of your family. It's an historical moment. Well, here we are, sitting, facing each other, chatting. This is the famous equality for which you are fighting, isn't it? Tell me, is this moment worth the great fight? To me, it is well worth it. Would you like to smoke? Thank you. Abdullah, with the rose leaf. Mother brought them back from Nice. Yes, I know. I smuggled them across the border, in my trunk. Oh. Perhaps you like some brandy? Please. This is our 50-year-old Armagnac. Came with the cigarettes. He probably traveled in your trunk, too. Yes, he did. And in very good company. Let me see. There were silk stockings, Chanel 22, and, oh yes, the lilac material for that wrap of yours. I spent two days looking for that. Oh, really? You went shopping for me? Quite often, when I was away with the Count. He always had me select your presents for you. Oh, I never dreamed. That little bracelet pleased me very much. And that cream-colored negligee. With the rose point lace? Mm-hmm. That was very beautiful on you. Then you must have selected my... Oh, yes, Baroness. I, I hope they were the right size. Yes, exactly. Oh. <sighs> what you don't know about me. Yes, I'm afraid I have a rather ungallant advantage over the Baroness. I know everything about you. It's, it's rather close in here, don't you think? Shall we go into the conservatory? You've traveled a long way in the last few months, Your Hand. Has it made you much happier? I never expected that it would, Baroness. Then why did you go into politics? You seem so content to that father's. Every man has bold dreams. For instance? For instance, to smoke a cigarette to its very end. Until now, I've seldom been able to do that. Usually after the first or second puff, just when it tastes its very best, I've had to throw it away, because someone would ring a bell. I wonder if the people who push buttons upstairs have any idea how shrill a bell sounds downstairs. Hmm? When you came here, we didn't shake hands. Can't we go back now and start over? You see, the catchphrases of your party become a reality. Liberty, equality, fraternity. Equality, because I offer you my hand. Liberty, because you don't let go of it. 
and fraternity because I'm not the least bit angry. No, Baroness. They're still catchwords. There is no equality. I was never so sure of it as I am at this moment. At this moment? Yes. I stand here in your house as your guest. You offer me a seat, you hold out your hand, but it's all in vain. I still haven't the courage to throw off the chains that have bound me from my birth. I still haven't the courage to tell you why I've tried to educate myself. Why I've been ambitious to become something more than a butler. I still can't tell you. Johan, are you trying to tell me that your ambition, your career, everything is, is because of me? I'm no believer in miracles, Baron. I've always known that nothing could ever happen to place me at your side. Oh, those are only words. What do you tell me this, if you want nothing of me? I do want something. What? I want you to throw me out. That's why I'm going to say this. So that you can hear it once and it'll be over. I love you. For five years, ten years, ever since I can remember, I've loved you. And I hate you because you don't notice it. But I pity you because you're a coward. Because you live with a man you despise. Why? For the sake of appearances. All your life is a sham, a fraud. You're spoiled, proud, unjust. But I love you. You understand? I love you. Now will you throw me out? I want to be thrown out. You hear? I warn you, if you don't... You have. You have. Well. You want me to be nice to your guest? Hospitality could hardly go further. Katrina! To think you could do a thing like this to me! Oh, uh, the Dowager Duchess Zilka is leaving, my love. She wishes to tell you about a charming party this has been. Very well. Will you excuse me, please? I'll go with you. Just sit down. Thank you. Cigarette? Thank you. I hope you've been enjoying the party. Very much. I'm delighted you were able to join us. The pleasure was all mine. I've been hoping for an opportunity to talk to you. Perhaps this isn't quite the time. Quite all right. Yes, I believe it is. In fact, I think it's an ideal time. But what I wanted to talk to you about is uh, rather important. Now it's uh, very important. I have been watching you and your party with a great deal of interest. Very sound, very progressive. I find myself in complete agreement with you. My party will be very happy to hear that. As a matter of fact, I've decided to join you. So? And of course, I'll expect to serve in some position which will uh, be worthy of your talent. Exactly. Good night. Good night. So glad you came. Good night. Good night, Countess. Good night. Good night, Baroness. Had a marvelous time. Thank you. Good night. Uh, where's Papa? Well, uh, you know how that man knows properties. He's gone to the club. He's probably up to his neck in steam this minute. Oh, uh, the club. Giza. Bring Mr. Porrock's hat and coat in mind, please. Where yes. are you going? Oh, it's just something to discuss with Papa. Nothing but dull politics, my dear. Nothing to worry that sweet little head of yours about. Good night, Mama. Good night, my sweet. Come along, dear. You see that Papa doesn't get in a draft and keeps warm. You know how easily he takes cold. Oh, Johan! Oh, yes, Countess. Good night, Baron. Good night, Johan. Good night. Good night, Baroness. Good, good night. Good night. Lovely good night. 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 Good night.
Well, good night, Tom. Uh, good night. 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 Mm -hmm. What was it? When George walked into the conservatory, just as I was kissing your hand. Oh, really? What? Did she eat anything? Oh, yes, Your Excellency. A hearty breakfast. Oh, that's good. Oh, good morning, Mother. My dear, you poor child. I know you didn't sleep a wink. Oh, but I did. I slept beautifully. Then you're the only one who did. I know Papa didn't. He never can sleep in town with all that noise and smell. Oh, if he'd only get back and let us know what happened. They're probably mixed up in a duel, shooting and stabbing each other. Husbands are such fools. For heaven's sake, Mother, sit down. You are wearing a hood a rug. Well, it's no rug anyhow. But, you know, I can't understand your calmness. I can't understand your agitation. Must I have good reason to be agitated? Now look at you. Now I've always been on your side, but last night George was right. How could you ever let yourself get to the point of and then get caught at it? <laughs> oh, tell me, Mother. When you were young, didn't you ever thrill to a man who was far below you? Oh, nice question to ask me. When I was young. Oh no, Mother. We are both women. Take your hair down. <laughs> Wasn't there someone? Now let me think. Wasn't there? Yes, there was one. <laughs> who was it? An engineer. Oh, that won't do. Mm. Wasn't there anyone lower than that? He was a rich farmer. Mm -hmm. Still lower. There was an artist who did my portrait. Still lower. Would a house painter do? Later he became an opera singer. Oh, no. Good gracious, I have it. Your father was campaigning in the country. After his speech, we had dinner at a farm worker's tavern. There was a dance. I danced childish with all sorts of people. There was a farmer's boy there. Oh, he whirled me around and around. Katrina, never have I been so thrilled or so wildly whirled about. He was magnificent. And you never saw him again? Yes, once, the next morning in the marketplace. He was selling cucumbers. Cucumbers? Yes, oh, those days are gone forever. He was selling ten cucumbers for five cents. Oh, all right, Mother. Now imagine this. It suddenly turns out that this farmer boy is educated, intelligent, charming, altogether fine. But he has opinions, character. But I'm telling you, he sold cucumbers and he had anything but character. If you bargained with him, he would give you 12 cucumbers for five cents. <laughs> now, Katrina, how can you laugh with a scandal staring us all in the face? Oh, darling, you can't understand. Oh, can't I? You're not the only one. I've been mad enough to. There. That sounds like Papa's car. Now, you must be serious, my dear. Your father is morning. Morning. very upset. Good morning, Albert. Good morning. Morning, Father. Good morning. I'd like some coffee. Yes, dear, I knew you would. I told him to bring it in as soon as you arrived. Here, in just a moment. Well, what happened? Oh, you can imagine how anxious we are. What went on? What did Johan say? And George. George? You mean the new Minister of Commerce in the Coalition Cabinet? George? In the Cabinet? Yes, my dear, thanks to you. Oh, for heaven's sake, Father. What happened? George is to let you have a divorce without scandal, providing Johan has his party agree on George for the cabinet post. And what about Johan? He retires from politics. What? And he's coming back to us. Oh, how clever you are, Albert. No, my dear, he's not coming back to us. Oh, isn't he? Well, what's the meaning of this? I have no spoon. Oh, go quickly, you unfortunate creature, and bring a spoon. Sorry, Excellency. But, Father, this whole thing is ridiculous. Johan is giving up everything he's worked for, believes him. And for what? For your good name, young woman. Oh, nonsense. Just because I kissed him? You should have picked a less important person to kiss. Or a more secluded spot. But you can't let him do this. What do I care about George and his talk about scandal? You've got to stop it. You had no right. Yes, I have the right. I'm involved in this, too. Oh, but you were involved? Yes. Yesterday, before all this happened, I went to the palace and suggested Johan for the cabinet post. That was very nice of you, Albert. But can't you see the position it puts us all in? The inevitable conclusion is that I'm making a cabinet minister out of my former servant in order to make it easier for my daughter. Besides, Katrina, think of the nasty things they'll say about Papa after 40 years of public life, too. It's unbelievable. Why do we stand for it? Unfortunately, he holds the reins. He's your husband and a very ambitious man. I won't permit it. I'm afraid it's too late for you to do anything about it. It's all settled. Johan is going to nominate George in Parliament at noon. At noon? Today? Yes, my dear. Katrina, what are you going to do? Where are you going? Papa, Papa! Oh, it's 
It's up to your hand to handle her now. Oh, if only George hadn't gone snooping around that conservatory. And don't let me catch you sticking your nose into politics. I could go farther away. Good morning, Baroness. Good morning. May I drive you? No, I'll drive it myself. Parliament inspection yet? Yes, madame. Uh, just a moment. Who do you want to see? Johan Farrock. He hasn't come down yet. Oh, good. Where is his office? Uh, first door at the right, second floor. Thank you. Please come in. Johan, you can't do this. I had hoped you wouldn't hear about it until it was settled. I won't have it. I won't permit it. It's the only thing to do. Your husband had his heart set on a world-echoing scandal. So we agreed... But, Johan, you can't throw away everything you worked for, dreamed of. It's insane. Think of all the people who trust you, believe in you. Who is going to take your place? There are others. Oh, there are not. You know there aren't. You were born to lead them. And I'm not going to let you sacrifice yourself just because my husband... I'm afraid... I'll have to be the one to decide that. But don't you see? You are doing this for something that doesn't matter to me in the least. Do you think I care what anybody says? But I care. Johan, please, don't argue. I've been wrong about so much. Now I know I am right. Then you did mean it last night. Everything. You know I did. I love you. But I don't want my love to hurt you. I wanted to help you. You know that. Yes. And you do love me? I'll never stop loving you. Hmm. Then you won't do anything foolish, anything you will ever regret. No, I promise, Katrina. What again? Katrina, this has gone too far. No wonder you're late for Parliament. Goodbye, Baroness. Please don't concern yourself any further. Shall we go? <clears throat> By all means. Coming, my sweet? I wouldn't miss it for the world. Allow me. <sighs> well, did you see them? What's been going on? Everything is all right, Mother. What happened? Johan is not going to propose George for the cabinet post. I saw to that. <laughs> Katrina, I, I still don't understand. Mr. President. The chair recognizes the honorable representative, Mr. Porak. With our whole new program of taxation, crop control and housing at stake, the country demands a unified cabinet at once. And therefore, with the permission of the House, I'm going to deviate from our customary procedure and nominate from the floor candidate to fill the last of these vacancies. I refer to the position of Minister of Commerce. The office, as you know, requires peculiar talent and statesmanship. Isn't he talking about George? He can't be. He promised me he wouldn't. The man I'm going to nominate lays claim to both these qualities. Besides, I know him to be a shrewd, practical politician. He is talking about George. A man who will go to any length to achieve his purpose, who will sacrifice anything for his position. He happens to be a member of one of the most distinguished families of the country. I refer to the honorable member, Baron George Marisey. No. No. something with her. 
is your wife. It's up to you. <laughs> this is out of order. Please clear the gallery. Tell them why you are doing this, Your Hand. Tell them we love each other. Please, Baroness. I demand that this woman be removed. Your Hand, if you don't tell them what happened, I will. Baroness, I beg of you, please don't. I, this is outrageous. Ring for the guards. Put her out. You shut up, Joe. Tell her talk. Silence. Why should I be silent? Everybody else is talking. Please, Mother. Mr. President, won't you let me tell you what's behind this? Mr. Poroff is sacrificing himself needlessly. He's doing the country great wrong. You know, your hand, Poroff. You know that he would never propose my husband, Baron Morisset, for such a responsible office unless he was compelled to. And that is what's happened. He's trying to save me. Johan has lived in my father's house for years. He's known me ever since I was a little girl. But it wasn't until last night that we discovered that we were in love with each other. I kissed him. My husband saw us and took advantage of this opportunity to advance himself politically. He offered to give me a divorce without scandal, providing Johan would nominate him for the cabinet post and then resign. Gentlemen, that is a simple truth. Now make your choice. Shall it be Baron Marisse or Johan Poderoff? Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Well, good morning. You're the new maid, huh? Yes, sir. I hope I'm going to be satisfactory, sir. I, uh, uh shouldn't be at all surprised. How do you like your toast? No, uh, the hot. How do you like your coffee? Very hot. And uh, how do you like your mess? Like you, Mrs. Borog. 